Okay, so I'm Talia. Um, I did a talk yesterday. I'm glad I didn't scare you guys away with my testing and production talk. Um, today we're going to talk about something different. We're going to be talking about building applications with infrastructure as code. Um, this is my background. Um, if you missed me yesterday, um, I used to be a test engineer. I started my career doing QA and automation. And then I transitioned into being a dev advocate and doing more um, work with uh, external developers. Um, yeah, and before Akamai, I was at AWS. I was on the serverless team. And now I'm at Akamai doing a lot of um, cloud-focused uh, cloud content with Linode. So let's get started. All right. So we're going to go through an introduction to infrastructure as code, talk about what it is, what the use cases are, um, and why someone would want to use infrastructure as code. We'll talk about um, some of the benefits. Then we'll talk about some of the tools. Um, specifically, we'll go through a demo with Linode and Terraform at the end, um, and why you'll want to use specific tools, one, one versus the other. Okay, so many times when developers start building applications, you usually start in um, your cloud provider's console, right? Like you'll go into like the AWS management console or, or whatever cloud provider you use and you um, choose like create a Lambda function here, choose this resource here, make this a destination for this Lambda function here, um, create this database from, from the UI, like normally, when I, especially like when I first started in the cloud, like the first thing you do is you go to the UI and you play around with it and build stuff um, because you have this graphical interface, like this place that you can see everything and how it's connected. Um, but the only problem with using a UI like that is that what happens when you want to copy everything that you did to another account? Or if you want to use this in, I hate to say it, a staging environment. Or, you know, if you want to use it somewhere else that, that um, is not where you, where you originally created it. Like, how do you replicate what you just did? Like, chances are you're not going to remember the exact resources, the exact configurations, what's specifically connected to what. And so that brings us to infrastructure as code. And this kind of solves that problem of that automation, that replication of how do I replicate what, what I just did? How do I remember all the configurations? Um, so that... That's kind of what infrastructure as code does for us. So with infrastructure as code, what you're doing is you're automating that provisioning process. So you're not going to go to the console and click on the services you want and configure, um, configure the resources from the console. What you do is you have what's called a configuration file. And in this configuration file, you define all of the resources that you want for your application um, and all the configurations for those resources. Um, and that tells you how to instantiate your, in your infrastructure. So you're not doing this from the UI. You're doing it from a configuration file. And so in this configuration file, you have one place with all the steps to set up your application. And you can reuse this whenever you need. And what this does at the core of this is it allows you to treat your configuration file, treat your infrastructure as code. And so what do you do with code if like something doesn't work? If, if you push something and it doesn't work, you roll it back to a different version, right? So you have this one place um, that has like a consistent view of your application. Um, and if something goes wrong after you push up those changes, you can, oh, you can revert and um, roll back those changes. So at the core of this is it allows you to treat your infrastructure as code. And, and what this does is it gives you the flexibility to build, change, manage your infrastructure in a really safe and repeatable way. So why is this important? Like, why is um, building with configuration files better than building in the UI? So firstly, it ensures consistency between environments. So this takes care of that, like, well, hey, it works on my machine. You know, like, you, you've heard that 100 times. Um, you have this one source of truth, that's this configuration file. Um, so it decreases that, that um, phenomenon by a lot. 
It's also great for onboarding developers. So this happens a lot where you're onboarding a new developer and they're setting up their machine and um, you give them this like book, like this you know, huge book of like, okay, like, good luck, here you go, this is how you set up your machine, and they're like in the corner crying because like they have no idea what's going on, versus if you use um, configuration files, you give them the configuration file, say, hey, deploy this, done. So it's just like a really great way to like um, spin up everything that you need in like one place, one file, and um, happy experience for new developers. Another benefit of infrastructure as code is that it eliminates configuration drift. So configuration drift um, happens when there's um, changes, that, uh, changes that happen during incident management. A lot of times you have these differences between your you know, staging environments, your pre-prod environments, and production. And those changes, um, if, if there was an incident that you had to make a change, a configuration change for one of those environments, um, it causes a, a configuration drift between those environments because a lot of the times you don't make the same changes between you know, production and staging or pre-prod or whatever. Um, so this, using, using one source of truth, you have one configuration file that, has, that you can deploy to staging and pre-prod and all your other um, environments. It also decreases risk, so provisioning all of your infrastructure by hand is really risky. Um, it requires a lot of manual work, it could be error prone, like what if there's only one person at the company who knows exactly how to you know, connect everything and configure everything, what if they leave the company, like how are you gonna know how they set everything up or what the configurations are? So this really like reduces that risk. Um, because your infrastructure lives in a code repository um, and it's central to everybody. Again, it's this one source of truth that everybody has access to, um, who you want to have access. Um, and it's visible to you know, your, your system administrators or your DevOps team or whoever needs that. Okay, so how do we actually implement um, infrastructure as code? So there's a lot of tools that you can use and I'm gonna talk about um, a bunch of the tools at the end of this, um, but right now I'm gonna talk about Linode and Terraform. So one of the tools you can use is called Terraform. It's an infrastructure as code tool that you can use for defining both cloud and on-prem resources. Um, and again, you use these configuration files that you can um, version, reuse, um, and, and share them with whoever needs access. And Linode is a cloud computing provider um, that you can use to to make these resources. So this is an example of a configuration file, and configuration files um, are declarative, which means that they describe the end state of your infrastructure. So uh, with, with whatever cloud provider you're using, with whatever infrastructure as code tool you're using, when you write resources in your configuration file, you're, you're writing the end state. So I'm not gonna say this is how you create this Lambda function, I'm gonna say this is what I want, and I don't have to write like step-by-step -step instructions of like, this is how you create the Lambda function. I'm just saying, this is the Lambda function, these are the configurations, this is the IAM role I want, these are the configurations for that. And then your cloud provider will say, okay, let me make that for you. So you don't have to go into like the details of how to do it. Um, normally configuration files are simple, they're human readable, and, and again, they describe the overall topology. And so in this configuration file, once you deploy this, these resources are gonna be either created or updated or um, destroyed depending on if they exist or not. So really reusable, it's a very re reusable um, process. So specifically in this configuration file, we're saying, hello, please create this IAM role, create this Lambda function, that's it, thank you. So I don't need to say how to create them, I just write what I want, and then um, in this case, Terraform will create these resources for me. Um, there is a core workflow for handling infrastructure changes, and there's a version of this with every cloud provider that you use, like they all have some sort of, um, you know, create, update, delete, some kind of um, workflow. So with, with Terraform, the first 
the first thing we need to do is write the configuration file. This is where you define all the resources that you want to create um, and all the elements you need. Um, the command you use here is terraform refresh. So this goes out and it will talk to um, all of the current cloud providers. It'll say, what is my current state? Um, it'll get that, that current state for you. Next, we have Terraform plan. So Terraform plan will create an execution plan. And here, in this stage, you'll figure out what do you have to do to get your current configuration to your desired configuration. So you're saying, it, bef before when you write the configuration file, you're saying, this is what I want. And then you're saying, what I have versus what I want. So what's the actual state and what's the desired state? And then it's going to do kind of like a git diff and like differentiate, like, okay, I need to add this, I need to remove this, I need to update this. It'll give you like that difference. Um, and so based on what you want, um, Terraform cr will create this plan of, okay, I know how to get you to where, where you want to be. And then we have Terraform apply. So this is when um, Terraform goes out and, and, and performs the proposed operations. It'll execute that plan. It'll actually perform those actions. So it'll add your GCP network, or it'll remove your um, DynamoDB database, or whatever, whatever you want it to do. It'll perform those actions. And there's a couple of parts um, to this that are essential to the way it works. So the first is, um, core. So core is responsible for a few things. Firstly, it takes in that configuration file. Um, the configuration file is something that you create that's written by you, the user. It also takes in the current state. Again, that's that source of truth for, for your environment. And it uses that state file to determine what needs to be created, updated, or destroyed. So when you run um, all of your commands, you have that, um, that one source of truth. And then you have what's called providers. So providers are how Terraform will connect to the rest of the world. And so there, there's a ton of different providers. Um, you have things like um, infrastructure as a service tools like AWS, Azure, GCP, Linode. You have platform as a service tools like Heroku and Kubernetes. You can have software as a service tools like Splunk and GitHub. And so you have what's great about using infrastructure as code, and, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little later when we talk about tooling, but you always have all of these different parts of your infrastructure that, that are connected to each other, right? Like you have your, your infrastructure as infrastructure as a service, your platform as a service, and your software as a service. And these are all part of your logical end-to-end -end delivery. Like you, you don't you can't have your application without like logging or or without GitHub or without all these different pieces. So with infrastructure as code, you have this one place where you can manage all of those different pieces. So when you use infrastructure as code, you have this single unified delivery of Again, all of those pieces, you don't want to have to use like one tool for your infrastructure, one tool for observability, one tool for every service of your application. And you don't have to piece those things together. So instead, anything that has like an API associated with it, Terraform can enable them to be a provider. And so you have this one end-to-end -end solution. Okay, so how do you actually start using infrastructure as code? Like, let's, let's, we're gonna go through, like, from someone who doesn't have any infrastructure existing to someone who already has an entire application existing, and, like, how do I adopt this into my organization? So, first, let's start out with someone from, like, day one. So, I have, I have nothing, I don't have any resources, and I wanna start using infrastructure as code. So this is where you go from running nothing to running something. And so this is where you provision your initial set of infrastructure. You describe what's my desired configuration, like what do I want, what do I want um, to be connected to what. And so this is where you create your, your Terraform plan, your execution plan. Again, apply will go out and, and create or update those resources for you. So then there's the more challenging day two and day two plus. So this is when you already have something that's existing and you want to update it or you want to remove something or you want to somehow um, evolve what you have. So you're changing this over time. You're adding new 
services, you have existing infrastructure and you can enhance it by adding other elements or or you can run or you can um, you can add things, you can remove things, but what's great about this is that you're running the same workflow. So those three commands, the Terraform plan, Terraform apply, all of, all of them have um, that workflow. You can use day one, day two, and, and forward. The workflow doesn't change. And then you have um, day N, and this can be at any time in the future where you decide to decommission your infrastructure. Let's say I was using this for a test environment and I just wanted to see like what would happen if I create some amount of resources and put them together. Um, so maybe these resources, like you don't need them anymore, you don't need this infrastructure anymore. So you can run um, Terraform destroy and that's gonna destroy all those resources. Um, and it's basically just a specialized version of apply that will remove those resources and destroy all of those elements. There's a lot of advantages to this workflow. Um, firstly is that the day one experience is identical to day two. So when you, when you create your infrastructure, you, you update these configuration files, that process, oh my god, I've touched this thing like 12 times, I'm sorry. Um, the process is not going to change. Like you have this one workflow that you can use to create, update, destroy um, your resources and that is not going to change. So that's, that your day one experience is going to be identical to day two. And when you think about that, like your infrastructure is continuously evolving, right? Like you're never going to... I don't know about you, but I'm never going to get to a place where I'm like, okay, that's my infrastructure. I'm never touching it again. I'm done. Like, you're always going to be adding things, removing things, add a server, add a database. Like, it's always going to be evolving. And when you have this one unified place where everything lives and, and you know, it's, it's, in, a, it's in one place, it's, it just will make your life easier. So, um, again, you can destroy this whenever whenever you need to, if you, if you run Terraform Destroy, um, it'll just clean up the environment. Like you don't need like a separate, um, a separate workflow for it. You can use the same workflow. And in this life cycle, you go from nothing to something, you evolve it day over day, um, and then you can decommission it. So as your team grows, it can be challenging to um, manage your infrastructure, and so, Normally, companies will start with like one single individual, like this happens with startups, like there's one DevOps person and they know everything about the infrastructure and nobody else knows what's going on. Um, so this is, this is really common where that, that specific person, like they will start that configuration file, they'll write everything, then they'll run Terraform plan. What does this configuration do? What does Terraform need to do to apply these changes? They'll run that basic workflow and that one person will continue to evolve the infrastructure on their own. But now the company is growing. Let's say now you have a DevOps team or you have um, a team of system administrators. Like now you have a group of people. Um, so how do you add multiple team members without stepping on each other's toes? So basically, the, the, the point here is we, we want to have a consistent view of what the infrastructure looks like um, and we don't want to step on each other's toes. So you do this with something called Terraform Enterprise and so this augments the workflow a little bit because you're using version control. So you're, you're using something like GitHub or Bitbucket or somewhere to um, push those changes to so that again you have this one source of truth but instead of um, instead of those configuration files living just in one person's um, land, you have them in, in GitHub. And then you have um, something called a Terraform module. So this is, this is good for like really, really big organizations. Um, and a module is basically a black box of a few different resources that are put together. So let's say like I have, um, I have a group of resources put together and it's really complex to make and the configuration file for it is like really long and as a developer I might not necessarily need to know all of the details of every configuration for, for this group of resources. I might just need to be able to create that resource when I need to. Um, and so this is, this is a way to encapsulate that complexity and have those resources be accessible to a broader audience. So modules are basically 
containers for multiple resources that are used together rather than directly in terms of like physical objects. So um, it, it's good for like groups of resources. So how do we manage and share these modules? So there's, there's a few different registries for cloud providers. Um, in, in this case, again, we're talking about Terraform, but PowerShell has one, AWS has one, Google has one. Um, who's the other one? Those are the big ones. Azure has one, oh, po specifically PowerShell. Um, yeah, so, so all the big, big um, cloud providers have their own registries, but what's great about a registry is that you don't have to start from scratch. So let's say you want to create a Lambda function. You'll go into the Terraform, and you're using Terraform. So you can go into the Terraform registry. I swear I'm not touching this, and it's just like freaking out. Um, if you wanted to create a Lambda function, you'll go into the registry, type in Lambda function, and there'll already be a template there for you that you can use. Um, same thing with like a GCP network. Let's say you want to create a network. You'll go in, you'll write that out in the registry, search for it in the, reg in the registry, and there'll al already be pre-written code for you that you literally just copy and paste. Um, and in the demo I'll show you, that's kind of the same thing that we did. Um, so my point here is that you don't have to start from scratch. You can use existing code that's, that lives in, in whatever registry you're using. Um, and so that, it just makes that process a little bit easier. You can also import your existing infrastructure into, into a configuration file. So um, basically there's like a new, a new process, right? So in, in, in our original workflow, you're starting from scratch, but like what if you already have resources, like what if you already have a ton of infrastructure in place, like what do you do? Um, basically, there's, there's, a, there's a new process. So first, you identify the existing infrastructure that needs to be imported, and then you import that infrastructure into your Terraform state file, and then you write a configuration file that matches that infrastructure, you review the Terraform plan, and then again, it's the same process, you apply those, apply those changes to to your um, application, and that'll just update the state. Another benefit of using um, infrastructure as code, a lot of them, a lot of them do this. Um, it's called multi-cloud deployment. It's very rare that I think that companies are using just one cloud provider. Like, okay, raise your hand if you use more than one cloud provider. Yeah, this is like it's like almost everyone. So. Um, I recommend using an infrastructure as code tool that can, that can do multi-cloud deployment um, because it's really rare that companies will only use one cloud provider. Um, and so this is great for like fault tolerance. Um, there's a more graceful recovery if something goes wrong, if one cloud provider has, has an outage. Um, and so with Terraform, you have that same workflow and you can manage multiple providers. You can manage multiple um, resources, you can have like these cross-cloud dependencies, um, and you can handle them all in one place. Okay, so let's recap the advantages of infrastructure as code, and then we'll do a quick demo. So infrastructure as code enables everybody, regardless of your DevOps experience, to be able to self-service their infrastructure. So if I'm a developer and I need to you know, work on specific resources, I can create those on my own, or I can um, go in and, and have someone create a module for me. So I, it's, it's, it makes the, the self-service process of your infrastructure um, really great. You can also implement the, the principle of least privilege. Like if you're, um, if you're the DevOps person and you don't want everybody to have access to be able to create every type of resource, like you have that ability to, to have that control. Um, you have this natural progression from day one where you start from nothing to day two plus where you, where you have that core IAC workflow. And then you have this natural progression from single person to a small team to an entire organization um, using things like enterprise and modules. Um, and you can also do um, multi-cloud deployments. 
You can exist, oh, I did that in the wrong order. You can import your existing infrastructure um, and you have this single unified delivery of your infrastructure as a service tools, your platform as a service tools, and your software as a service tools. Okay, this is my favorite slide. So when we're talking about infrastructure as code tools, there's so many different tools out there um, and there's, there's a bunch of different options. So we talked about Terraform a little bit and the key differentiator between Terraform and the other tools is that Terraform allows you to deploy resources from all of the other cloud providers. So you can deploy a database with GCP, an instance from Linode, um, all in the same configuration file. Um, Terraform has a registry that you, has these like pre-made modules you can use. Um, Amazon has two infrastructure as code tools. The first one is CloudFormation and the second one is SAM. So CloudFormation is for um, non-serverless resources. So things like EC2, RDS, and then there's the um, serverless application model, SAM. So SAM is for serverless resources, so things like Lambda and DynamoDB. Um, and so one of, the, one of the big differences between Terraform and CloudFormation is that with CloudFormation, you have to use Amazon resources. So if your entire infrastructure is built on Amazon, you can use CloudFormation. But if you have resources from other cloud providers um, and you want to have that in your infrastructure as code tool, you can't use CloudFormation. Um, what else? So with, um, what else? Terraform is written in um, a specific language. It's called HashiCorp configuration language. It's like specific to HashiCorp. Um, with, with Amazon, you have um, either JSON or YAML. Um, Google is another uh, cloud provider that you can use. They also have templates that you can use online. They also pair um, on their documentation. They have a ton of resources that you can use um, GCP resources with Terraform. So I think that's their preferred method of infrastructure as code is to use those together. Um, there's also PowerShell desired state configuration where you can install modules with um, DSC desired state configuration with those resources and the registry for PowerShell that I'll, I'll share these links at the end but the registry is powershellgallery.com and so this is that central repository so if you wanted to use um, use resources and create them with PowerShell you have that ability with the PowerShell gallery um, and so what's great about this this too is that you can also with PowerShell add resources from other cloud providers so that's not um, not a constraint here. So just to summarize, like some things to think about when you're choosing an infrastructure as code tool, are you using resources specific to one cloud provider or um, more cloud providers? Like do you need external resources as well? And do you want your configuration file written in YAML or JSON or HashiCorp configuration language or in a PowerShell script? So the, 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 what I want you to take away from this is that it doesn't matter what tool you use, like using infrastructure as code is going to help you with automation, it's going to help you with reusing templates, it's going to speed up your development process. So um, you have to choose the tool that's, that's best for you and that meets your um, requirements, but um, the, the point of this I want to make is like it doesn't matter what tool you use, it just to use infrastructure as code is, is kind of the, the, the meat of this. Okay, so let's do a quick demo with um, Linode and Terraform. Also, the reason I keep bringing up Linode, I probably should have mentioned this, I work for Akamai, Akamai owns Linode, um, so full disclosure, that's, that's why we're doing this demo. Um, okay, so one of the providers that um, Terraform has is the Linode provider. And I'm going to have a Q, I'll, I'll have a QR code at the end of this that has um, a link to this demo so you don't have to like write anything down or, or um, take pictures, if, uh, unless you want to. Um, okay, so there's two prerequisites. You need a Linode account and you have to install Terraform. The first thing you have to do is generate an SSH key. This is how you connect to your server and you use this command SSH key gen. Um, and then you choose where to save it and create a passphrase. And then you copy, um, you copy it and save it. You, you enter cat in the path key, you copy it and save it. 
Next, you need to create a Linode API token, um, and you do this from the Linode UI, and you choose um, create a personal access token, and then you choose your um, level of security. So you, it's basically just the access levels that you want. Um, once you create this, you have to save it locally because you won't be able to access it later. Um, next, you're actually going to create your configuration file. So this is everything that we just went through. Um, and you're going to save this as a TF file. The easiest way I know how to do this is to just do like nano and then the name of the file. Um, and this is how Terraform knows what to look at. It's with that .tf file. Um, and again, this is where you define all the resources that you want to create. So um, this, this template is from the Terraform registry. Um, all I did was copy and paste it, and I have to copy my Linode API token here. Uh, if I was using PowerShell or if I was using um, Google or whatever, I would, have to, I would have to add that API token. So this is just specific for Linode because I'm using Linode resources. Um, you add your, the passphrase that you just created, um, and yeah, this is your configuration file. Um, the first thing we do is run Terraform init. It's just going to initialize Terraform. And then we run Terraform plan. And once you run plan, it basically gives you an execution plan of like, this is your configuration file, and it'll say, okay, this is what you want to do, right? Like, this is what you want to create, this is what, this is what you want to update, or this is what you want to destroy. In this case, I'm adding these two resources. And then you run Terraform apply, and this will actually go ahead and apply those changes. It'll create, update, or destroy whatever you want. And you can see here, apply was complete. I added this resource, um, and it'll do whatever, whatever you specified. Um, and then in the UI, you can see like Terraform web example, like that um, instance was created. Um, this is the QR code for this full tutorial. Um, so this one is for Linode and Terraform, but I'm going to, in the next slide, post um, the PowerShell gallery link so you guys can um, copy that if you would like. So there's a ton of different ways to learn how to use infrastructure as code. The first thing I would recommend is figure out what, which tool you'd like to use, and all of them have like resources online. Um, the one at the bottom is for uh, PowerShell that I talked about. There's um, the, the GCP and Terraform um, documentation together. Like when, when you go on the Google, the Google infrastructure as code site, it, you, they use Terraform, so you, that, that's an option you can use. Um, if you're using AWS, um, there's something called the, let's see if I remember, the serverless, um, serverless resource, I'm gonna find it. Um, <laughs> I worked on it. Um, it's a, it's a, the same, it's the same registry that everyone else has, um, but it's for, for Amazon. And um, yeah, those are, this is our DevOps community at, at Linode where you can check out our blogs. And that's all I have. Thank you, everybody.